what happened was that most of these mortgages were written by mortgage brokers who passed them to banks in off-balance sheet called SIVs, who sold them. And so nobody that had anything to do with putting this together had any interest in whether they paid off or not because they'd been paid and they were celebrating on their yachts. So we had billions of dollars of credit out there where the people whose money it was, the church in Spitsbergen or wherever it was in Dusseldorf or in all over the world, these uh, people were putting their money in and they had, they had no idea what the real thing was they relied on. So the credit agency, these credit granting agencies, which is a semi-government monopoly, uh, clearly are one of the one of the places where the system fell down. Now the biggest purveyors of all of this were the investment banks. By investment banks, there are not many left now, but it was the big six, you know, Merrill Lynch and Goldman Sachs and Bear Stearns and so forth. And a dramatic thing happened to them in 2004. And this, there's a great lesson I think to learn. In 2004, they came into, they're regulated by the SEC. They came into the SEC and said, you have regulations about how much capital we can have, how much leverage. And the top amount was 15 and they were supposed to have 12. In other words, they could not have more than $12 of loan for a dollar of capital that they had in the business. And they said, this is an antiquated system. We don't think it a really uh, is the appropriate system. We have developed a system based on studying history and based on our history determining how much capital we have. And we'll determine it ourselves. And then you as a regulator of the SEC can look and see what we're doing. Bottom line, from 2004 till today, when, as you know, a few of them are busted and the rest are converting to banks, the big ones, they went from 12 times leverage to 30 to 35 times leverage. In other words, the more they borrowed, the more they made, and they were essentially packaging mortgages and other investment vehicles and they were, Bear Stearns was borrowing $12 billion every night on overnight repos so they could get more money, leverage up, and make more money. And I think the lesson of that was very clear. If an industry needs regulating, self-regulation, unsupervised, does not work. And as a result, we have tremendous losses in our system, not all of which are out, because the investment banking business, which is the go, go part of finance, was out of control. About the same time that that happened, over at Fannie Mae, they had a new president. <coughs> His name was Mud. <laughs> you know, it's sort of Shakespearean, I mean. The... Anyway, his name was Mud. He was not really a financial guy. He was in the do-good side. You know, we're going to put every American in a home. And when these subprime mortgages came along, his financial people said to him, uh, these are very risky, we better not do much business with them. He overruled them, and uh, as a result, they put these subprime mortgages into securitizations with the U.S. government backing them, uh, over half a million, so there was a tremendous additional source of funding. And uh, 
as a result, you know, what happened, Fannie and their, their uh, sister corporation, Freddie Mac, which are securitizers, both went broke and the government had to take them over. We don't know how much that's going to cost yet because they own them, but they haven't made good on their losses yet. But it's going to be a huge amount. So over here we had the investment banks going off capital standards. And over here, the other big packager, we had Fannie Mae adopting new credit rules to allow them to do what their financial people didn't think was appropriate. At the same time, the derivative market was developing. Derivative just means whatever you're selling derives its value from something else. I mean, if I say to you, I want to sell you 10 shares of General Motors stock at this price, and I want a contract to do that, and you agree that I pay you some money and you, you agree you'll buy it at that price, then whether or not it's a good deal derives from whatever the value of General Motors stock is. So derivatives. But as you all know, finance has made them infinitely more complicated than that. But that's, but the fundamental ones that really grew were credit swaps or derivatives where someone was contracting with AIG or whatever it was to uh, cover a debt that they were owed. They wanted to make sure it was paid, so they bought an insurance policy from AIG that said, uh, you, if something goes wrong with this, you'll pay me. And the problem was that there was no regulatory agency for these. And it was proposed that their regulation, or at least disclosure be required. And the industry fought it, and the Federal Reserve, under Alan Greenspan, vehemently opposed. And they made the argument, which you hear all the time, and I can remember Alan in, in saying, look, these are sophisticated contracts between knowledgeable buyers and knowledgeable sellers, no regulator, can do as well as they'll do. So what do you need a regulator for? The market will regulate these. And he won the day. So among the list of our friends, along with me and others, Alan was clearly, I'd say, the key person responsible for the fact that we didn't even know how many of those contracts there were and they were up in the trillions. Uh, so, when AIG got in trouble, it turned out that they had one division with 400 people in it. They had 80,000 employees. They had 400 people in one division. They wrote all these contracts. They didn't report any of them. So they were, you'd say, gambling by writing these contracts. And when things started to go bad and they had to pay on these contracts, the whole monster, the largest insurance company in the world, went under. Well, those are just a few of the things that were happening that came together. And the reason, in my view, that we have the kind of problem that we have today. Now, if you look at what we're doing about it, and you notice I'm not mentioning the, 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 the candidates because neither of them has presented any program that I'm aware of to deal with today's problem, the one that has developed over the last six weeks. The panic, the freezing of the system, the start of a, what's going to be a big increase in unemployment and bankruptcies and foreclosures and all the rest.